Early signing day is just a week away. The transfer portal continues to go crazy. So, obviously, recruiting is of the utmost importance for head coach Jeff Brom and company. On today's episode of the Locked On Louisville podcast, we're going to talk about the Cardinals trying to flip a highly rated four-star prospect currently committed to an SEC school. We'll talk about the linebacker position as it pertains to the portal, a lot of movement on the Cardinal roster, and more. So with that being said, let's get right on into the show. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome into another episode of the Locked On the Louisville podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. Today's episode is brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Omaha Steaks is a gift from the heart, a gift that we will be remembered with every unforgettable bite. Order with complete confidence today, knowing you're ordering the very best. Visit omahasteaks.com using the promo code Locked On at checkout to get that extra $30 off of your order. As always, I want to say thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. Just a reminder, the Locked On the Louisville podcast is free. On all streaming services, five days a week, your team, every day. As I alluded to in the opener, Louisville looking to flip a four-star SEC commit. Daylon Austin, currently committed to LSU, will be officially visiting Louisville this weekend. We'll also talk about the linebacker position as it pertains to the portal. Um, Dorian Jones has entered the portal. Ben Perry and K.J. Cloyd have withdrawn their names from the portal. So we'll talk about the state of the linebacker position, and then we'll dive right into a weekly mailbag segment. So... Starting with the uh, big news on Tuesday, it was announced that um, four-star cornerback prospect Dalen Austin would be taking an official visit to the University of Louisville this weekend, which is turning out to be a big weekend. Um, A lot of uh, highly rated guys, um, both committed, some through the transfer portal, will be on campus, Pierce Clarkson, Madden Sanker, um, so on and so forth. The California prospect is currently committed to LSU, um, received an offer from Louisville on Tuesday, and immediately announced that he would be taking an official visit. So there's a couple different ways to look at this. Number one, it seems like his commitment to LSU isn't the strongest at this time. The perception uh, surrounding his recruitment uh, from people out on the West Coast, those insiders from various uh, services, 24-7 sports, rivals, so on and so forth, believe that, um, you know, Dalen Austin could be looking to potentially go elsewhere, especially out west. Oregon seems to be the team to beat currently if he were to decommit from LSU, which at this point, obviously nothing is set in stone. He could definitely end up with Brian Kelly's Tigers, but Right now, it seems like the perception is that um, he definitely could be decommitting and possibly looking to stay out west. So Louisville will have its hands full in terms of competition of trying to, um, you know, compete for Dalen Austin's uh, national letter of intent. Now, it is worth noting that um, Austin is likely going to be a guy that signs in February. So as good of an opportunity as Louisville will get here to get him on campus, I think that I would feel better about this recruitment if they could convince him to sign early rather than waiting till February. He's looking to take a couple more visits, apparently. Um, obviously, Oregon and West Coast teams are going to be tough to um, you know compete against, and not to mention LSU as well. Um, they're definitely going to do what they can to try to keep the highly rated four-star prospect. Austin, at this point, is rated as the 109th best player in the country, according to the 24-7 Sports Composite. The six foot one, 180-pound native of Long Beach, California, is rated as the 12th best cornerback and the 9th best in the state of California. Holds some big-time offers, uh, LSU, Michigan State, Alabama, so on and so forth. As I mentioned, Oregon. Um, is right there in the mix as well. Uh, Greg Biggins, uh, 24-7 sports national recruiting analyst that specializes in West Coast recruiting, projected uh, Austin back just this past month as a round four to seven NFL draft prospect. He had this to say about him. 
Austin is a tough physical corner who has improved athletically over the last year. He's one of the more technically sound corners in the region and really thrives in press coverage. He can bully an opposing corner, or I'm sorry, an opposing receiver at the line of scrimmage and plays with a nice edge in his game. He loves to hit, and it won't shock us if he slides over and plays some safety in college because of his size and skill set. Older, older brother Alex Austin is a starting corner at Oregon State and a likely NFL draft pick in April, and Dalen is further along at the same stage. He's also a dangerous return man and has returned multiple kicks for touchdowns, ran on the track team the last two years with multiple sub 11.0 100-meter times to his credit. Um, so, obviously, I don't have to spell out why this would be huge for the University of Louisville. First, let me say that it is – relieving to see that you know the cardinals are still in you know contention for some big time prospects especially out west you know now that scott satterfield is gone that kind of almost reaffirms the notion that a lot of this recruiting was you know due to nil due to adidas you know pierce clarkson steve clarkson you know so on and so forth um and it makes you believe that obviously you can't speak in absolutes you know, in full certainty, because anything can happen. You know, stranger things have happened on signing day leading up to signing day. You know, Wool's gotten burned on signing day multiple times over the past X amount of years. So, um, you know, nothing is official until players sign their national letters of intent. Um, so I say this obviously with a grain of salt, because at this point in time, one would feel confident that Louisville is going to hold on to the majority of the uh, California commits, um, which would be huge. Obviously, Pierce Clarkson has reaffirmed his commitment. Aaron Williams seems to be committed um, pretty heavily as well, along with um, you know, Jalil McClain. Now, granted, um, recruiting analysts have predicted DeAndre Moore and Jamari Johnson both to flip Johnson to Oregon. Uh, and more to either Texas or Georgia. So those are two to watch. So that'll be interesting to see if uh, Louisville can get those guys on visit this weekend. But it's turning out to be a very, very important recruiting weekend that we've seen in the past year or so under Scott Satterfield. And it's awesome that we're seeing one with Jeff Brom this early in his coaching career at such a crucial point in December with National Signing Day leading up just a couple days afterwards. At the very least, if Louisville cannot get a certain prospect to sign with the Cardinals early, getting a player to at least push back until February would be big. But in terms of this recruitment, um, I think that Louisville is probably on the outside looking in. Now, make no mistake about it. Getting an offer from Louisville and immediately scheduling an official visit this close to signing day, it's it's extremely notable. It's it's very um, significant. So don't look at this as, oh, he's just checking out the campus. Louisville's not a major possibility here. I would argue uh, the exact opposite now, where they are at in the um, list of schools where what Dalen Austin is thinking about. That's a different story. And if he's looking to go into February before he makes his decision, obviously you have time to um, – you know, make up ground if you are at another school. But if I'm Jeff Brom here, I, I think that I'm feeling the most confident if you can convince Dalen Austin to uh, sign early. I think that that's the thing to focus on here. Um, it seems like all signs are pointing to him sticking with that February timeline, but you never know. Um, now, granted, if he were to agree to sign early, that doesn't mean it would just be with the Cardinals um, because LSU, he is committed there. Um, now, most LSU fans that I know are bracing for the eventual decommitment of Austin. Um, they know that he is being rumored to flip to Oregon or end up at Oregon eventually or end up on the West Coast. Uh, but regardless, I think that it's solid for Louisville to get him on a visit. Um, it's great for recruiting, getting a top 100 or top 100, 110 player on campus and at a position that needs depth. And if you're able to get uh, – Two cornerbacks in this class, like Dalen Austin and Aaron Williams, two, two, two. Let me restart. Two top two hundred players nationally, both at the cornerback position. That would be huge for the Cardinals' secondary moving forward. So we'll continue to monitor that. We'll talk about the recruiting weekend as a whole later on this week. I want to transition now over into the linebacker position for the Cardinals. Um, some movement 
in the portal and out of the portal for the Cardinals. We'll discuss that here in a second after we talk about our friends and the title sponsor of the show, Omaha Steaks. Look, this is insane. Omaha Steaks has cut prices 50% site-wide to make you the gift-giving hero that you've always wanted to be. The holidays are here. Achieve gifting greatness when you gift the gift when you give the gift of perfectly aged, tender, and delicious Omaha Steaks. If you go to omahasteaks.com right now, you can take advantage of that 50% site-wide plus using the promo code locked on at checkout to get an additional 40% off. I'm sorry, $40 off your order. Omaha Steaks has everything you need to give a gift that's simply perfect from filet mignon to air chilled boneless chicken, ulti or ultra juicy burgers, so on and so forth. Don't wait. Order today and beat the shipping rush. Go to omahasteaks.com using the promo code locked on at checkout to get an extra $40 off your order. Minimum order may be required. Hey, Cardinal fans, want to take this time to say thank you all for making us your first listen. For your second listen, check out Locked On Sports today. Uh, from the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insight only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. So moving right on along into the second segment, discussing the linebacker position for Louisville next season and moving forward as it pertains to the portal. There's been a lot of movement in the portal, and there's been a lot of movement withdrawing from the portal. Um, ben Perry was the first linebacker to enter the portal. He has since withdrew. Uh, K.J. Cloyd entered the portal, and then Dorian Jones entered the portal. K.J. Cloyd on Tuesday withdrew from the portal so the Cardinals getting Ben Perry back getting KJ Cloyd back but losing a potential 2023 starter in Dorian Jones it seems like it's probably going to be Cincinnati the decision for Jones going to uh, the program where Scott Satterfield and Brian Brown and um, the rest of that coaching staff are currently um but overall, I think that it's huge to get Perry and Cloyd back. Uh, for Perry's sake, I think that he is a star in the making. We saw him last season. At times, I thought during certain stretches of games that he was Louisville's best defender on the field at certain times. Um, he had 42 tackles, um, three pass deflections, played as... A defensive back linebacker hybrid, obviously, um, in Louisville's system, versatility was the name of the game, played at that outside linebacker position that specialized in dropping back into coverage, but also getting up near the line of scrimmage. It's yet to be seen what defense Louisville's going to run. It's going to depend on the defensive coordinator position, but it seems like there's been an early rumor that Louisville could go with a 4-2-5, which essentially, um, you know, gives the defensive back the um, linebacker role and essentially uses defensive backs to fill the uh, void of linebackers, playing with two linebackers and five defensive backs. Um, the Los Angeles Chargers, my NFL team, plays that way, um, where Derwin James and company, you know, Bryce Callahan, so on and so forth, play in the linebacker position um, in on the outside. So... Uh, but re regardless, I think that whatever scheme that Louisville plays, you need depth. And there's no secret that, um, you know, Ben Perry coming back is huge news for Louisville because you bring back a starter for next year's team for a team that is losing a ton. Momo Sanogo is gone. Uh, Yasir Abdullah is gone. Um so on and so forth. I know that it seems like right now the status of Monty Montgomery is up in the air, whether he's going to go pro. Um, I think I heard a rumor that they're looking to try to get an extra year of eligibility for Montgomery. Now, whether he wants to take that or not. Um, so right now, until I hear otherwise, I'm not planning for 2023. Um, you know, I'm not planning to have Montgomery for 2023. Um, but bringing Ben Perry back is huge. KJ Cloyd back is uh, some big news as well because you have depth issues. You have, you know, I think a opportunity here for Cloyd to get some significant snaps next season. A guy that transferred from JUCO after he sustained a horrible injury in high school, um, transferred to Louisville. The past two years, he's been mainly on special teams in rotational sets 
for Louisville on the defensive side of the football. Um, but at the very least, this offers the, you know, another depth piece for the linebacking core. Um, and then Dorian Jones leaving Hurts as well. I thought that he was going to be a presumed starter for 2023 or, you know, a heavy favorite to be a starter. Um, very solid um, play over the past two years when Monty Montgomery got hurt in 2021. He and Jalen Alderman stepped up big time for the Louisville Cardinals. And then last season, there were times where he looked like Louisville's best linebacker during certain stretches of games. So um, losing Dorian Jones is big. I think that it reaffirms the notion that Louisville probably needs to bring, I would say, in my opinion, one to two starting level caliber linebackers into the program. Obviously, that's what makes um, holding on to Stan Quan Clark's commitment so, um, you know, pivotal for the Cardinals because of, you know, he being a guy that, in my opinion, plays more so on the outside, but could end up on the inside as well. But getting a guy like Stan Quan Clark to at least compete for depth in the two deep would be huge. There is Leviticus Sua, the um, California prospect that we talked about in August. Um, it seemed like he had kind of been forgotten by Louisville fans because there wasn't much traction in that recruitment. But he tweeted out uh, yesterday – or actually on Monday, a picture with his um, schools he's considering, and Louisville was in that mix. So if you could get him on campus as well, that would be huge. Um, so overall, I think that for the linebacker position, it's it's pretty straightforward. Even with um, – let's, let's play a hypothetical. If Louisville was able to have Monty Montgomery, Ben Perry, K.J. Cloyd, and Dorian Jones, all four in the linebacker position, and Stan Quan Clark makes it to Louisville, um, stays in, in the Flyville 23 class, I still think you're looking to add one to two starting level caliber prospects, or prospects, um, transfers, because you're having to replace a ton. I would rather go with veteran presence um, and allow Stan Quan Clark and company to rise into that role. Now, granted, Popeye Williams... Uh, is a guy that has added a lot of strength um, over the past season. He is a guy that is possibly on breakout alert for 2023. You also have um, TJ Quinn, um, Jalen Alderman, so on and so forth. Um, so I think that at the end of the day, it's going to be a situation to where Wolves is going to have to really do a good job in the portal. Um and it starts with uh, getting some highly rated guys to potentially join. So um, I'm looking at, I don't think that anyone else has entered the portal yet for the Louisville linebacker position. Um, I could be completely wrong. I felt like there was one more. And forgive me for looking this up on the spot, but at this time I thought that uh, – I thought that, no, there's no one else, I don't believe. Um, I thought that Jackson Hamilton might have entered the portal. Uh, I thought I saw something along those lines. I Forgive me if I'm wrong, but I thought I saw something along those lines. But regardless, regardless if you have Jackson Hamilton or if you don't have Jackson Hamilton, it's going to be uh, a need for the linebacker position moving forward. So, um Excited to see what Jeff Brom and company do as it pertains to that position. Obviously, having a defensive coordinator will be of the utmost importance. Um, getting some of the defensive staff from Purdue, um, you know, Hagan, Ron English, that's big time. So we'll see how the the roster is, is filled out at the linebacker position. But um, huge news to get Ben Perry and KJ Coyd back and tough news to hear about Dorian Jones transferring. So. We'll take this time at the end of this episode to um, you know conduct the weekly mailbag. So before we do that, I want to talk about our friends over at Bet Online. 
BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from pro football to college bowl season to basketball and World Cup. We've got it all at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline, where the game starts. Heading right on into the weekly mailbag, a couple of solid questions for this week's edition, beginning with a very recent addition to the mailbag with the news that Austin Reed is staying at Western Kentucky. Are you concerned about the quarterback position next year for Louisville? I would assume that this pertains to the transfer portal. Uh, Most thought that Western Kentucky quarterback Austin Reed was going to come to Louisville, especially when Tyson Helton did not get the Purdue job. Granted, he decides to stay um, in Bowling Green. And um, seemingly, there's not a quarterback right now that has been rumored to Louisville uh, outside of maybe DJ Uago Lale, but he may be looking to go back to the West Coast. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm worried, especially with how well Jeff Brom and Brian Brom are able to um, develop quarterbacks. And worst case scenario, if Pierce Clarkson is the starter for 2023, you could obviously have very much worse. Um, I think Clarkson is the guy for the future. Now, obviously throwing a true freshman into the mix right away um, can be a little bit risky, but if it has to happen... I wouldn't trust many other coaching staffs. But in terms of the transfer portal, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say I'm concerned, but it does make you raise an eyebrow just because at this point in time, there hasn't been another quarterback linked to Louisville. So, um, you know, with Brom just having gotten the job less than a week ago, I'll wait until, you know, January before I make that call because there's players still entering the transfer portal. So, uh, but I, I don't think that there's any concern at that point. Moving right on along, how well do you think Louisville does with local transfers in this cycle? I would assume that this refers to players that are from the city or from the state of Kentucky that have transferred or that went elsewhere in the nation and and are transferring elsewhere. Um, That's how I'm taking this question. That's how I'm answering it. Um, we talked on yesterday's or Monday's episode about uh, Aiden Robbins and Stephen Heron. There has been rumors of Heron possibly visiting Louisville this weekend. If he does, that would be big. I think Louisville's right in the mix there. If Louisville wants Aiden Robbins, there's a possibility also there. Um, Jansen Dunn, the defensive back from Bowling Green that um, transferred from Ohio State, he's going to be a guy to watch. Um, now, granted, I think that he is interested, and I would assume that Louisville's interested as well has, um, I think, a lot of interest in Kentucky, was down between basically Ohio State, Kentucky, and some other programs back uh, a couple of years ago. So Mark Stoops' team is going to be one to watch for. I think Jansen Dunn is a player to watch. Um, Let me think. Outside of that, I'm trying to think of who all else transferred or has entered the portal. I think those are the three main names um, that I can think of. If I'm forgetting any, please forgive me. But ultimately, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Moving right on along. Okay, I'm not going to answer that question. I feel like that question gets asked almost every mailbag, and I continually look over it in terms of um, basketball recruiting. The question is, do you think Kenny Payne will um, succeed in the transfer portal in the next offseason? I mean, obviously, he needs to. He has to because the – I guess I'm answering it. So um, I think that the opportunity is there for him to do well in the transfer portal because you have immediate playing time to be offered. There's no NCAA cloud. Um, You know, NIL is – in a position at Louisville to be utilized to the fullest. Now, Josh Hurd and company have done a great job with the 502 circle, so on and so forth. Um, but with the 2023 signing class, um, you know, being composed of two four-star wings, the transfer portal has to be a huge asset for the university of Louisville in the uh, off season, because um, you know, 
there's a lot of roster makeover that needs to be done. You need to bring in probably five to six um, contributing level players for next year. So the stage is there for Kenny Payne to succeed. Um, and I think that um, he will have every opportunity to. So um, I'm rooting for him. I hope that he is able to get it done. Obviously, this season is not going how Louisville fans had imagined. Um, it's It's been a very, very tough season, and we're only in December. Uh, but hopefully we can see some improvement. Um, but regardless, after this season, things are going to have to change drastically ahead of, of year two because of, um, you know, you would assume that most of this roster will not be back. And if so, you still need to absolutely overhaul the team. So um, moving right on along, the final question of the mailbag, back to the football recruiting side of things. There has been uh, talk about DJ Uago Lale uh, being a guy that Louisville could look at at quarterback. What are your thoughts on DJU from Clemson? I think that he fits Scott Satterfield's system. Uh, that utilizes our running quarterback more so than Jeff Brom's system does. Um, you know, there has been concerns on um, his throw accuracy in uh, the intermediate part of the field, decision-making in terms of his reads. Um, but I think that, you know, the talent is there. He has a solid deep ball, um, is mobile, can utilize his legs, which is extremely, um, you know, uh, beneficial. You have a guy that's played a lot of high power one or power five division one level football at a, at a program that has been very successful. Um, I think that, you know, it would be an upgrade for next season, but I think that it would require Jeff Brom and Brian Brom to be able to develop him into that system that uh, the Brahms run that is mainly predicated on the passing game. So is DJU going to be comfortable throwing the football a majority of the time? Um, I think that there are some concerns, but if there is any coaching staff that can get the most out of a quarterback, I think that it, it is the Brahms. So I could definitely see it happening, I feel like. Um, I'm not sure that it would be a package deal with his younger brother, Mateo, who's a five-star defensive end for St. John Bosco. But I do think that if Louisville were to um, get a commitment from DJU, um, I, I would welcome the move because I trust the Brahms when it comes to quarterback recruiting. That's probably the one position I look at and I'm like, ah, I'm not worried at all uh, about the quarterback position because I trust who is leading the program. So um, that's going to wrap up this Wednesday edition of the show. do want to take this time um, to extend our thoughts and prayers to the family and the friends of Mississippi State head coach Mike Leach. Um, who it was announced um, had passed away late Monday evening. It was announced on Tuesday. Um, our hearts go out to the Mississippi State uh, football program, the uh, Bulldog community as a whole, those that knew Mike Leach, those that loved Mike Leach, definitely a pivotal coach in the story of college football. He will definitely be missed. Um, his legacy will live on. Uh, just such, such a tragic event. Um, our hearts go out, our prayers, our thoughts go out to um, the Mississippi State community, the Mike Leach um, family, the friends of Leach, um, and, and those affected by this loss, the players at Mississippi State, the coaches, just everyone involved. Such horrible news that just reminds you of how fragile life is, you know, it gets said almost all the time, but we really need to start taking it to heart. Start telling people you love them. Reach out to people. Um, be consistent in your communication. Don't leave things unsaid. Um, try not to stay mad at people um, and vice versa. Do whatever you can to, to live your life to the fullest each day because you truly just never know. And um, it's just such a tragic loss. Um, and our hearts go out to all those affected. As I mentioned, that is going to wrap up this Wednesday edition of the show. Uh, throughout the uh, course of the week, we're going to continue to talk about recruiting. Uh, we'll talk about the uh, the Fenway Bowl coming up on Saturday and more. So be sure to stay tuned for the rest of the week. We'll see you soon. <laughs>